Welcome back boys and girls. Today I'm going to be covering some new goodies that are coming in .NET 8 that have been a part of Stefan Taub's blog. If you have gone ahead and opened it, it's absolutely massive. And if you've gone ahead and closed it, I wouldn't blame you. So basically I scan through the document and uh, there's a bunch of performance uh, improvements where, well, you're just going to get them for free. You don't really need to worry about it. And then sprinkled in there, there are little tools that you can start using in order to get performance or they're just convenience methods. So that's what we're going to be covering in this video. If you have any questions or you think there is something that I missed, please go ahead and leave a comment. Don't forget to check out the description. And if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. I also have a C Sharp course that is out. If you would like to know C Sharp as I do, I highly recommend you take a look at it. With that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing, super simple exceptions are getting more methods with it, which are Throw of equal, not equal, less than, less than or equal, greater than, etc. You get the picture. And these are all present on the argument exception class. And you would use them like so. Okay? Hopefully you can guess that this is a convenience function. Okay? Nothing to do with performance. Next on the list, in the reflections section, there is a improvement around the invocation of methods. If you have some kind of class that contains some kind of method and you're going to extract it, when you're invoking it this way through the method info, there is some kind of overhead there. I'm not entirely aware what that overhead is. Overall, that has improved. However, on top of it, two classes are being added, method invoker and constructor invoker. You can go ahead and take your method information, place it inside a method invoker, effectively creating a method invoker for that method, and that method invoker is going to perform better than the base invoke on the method info. Okay. So if you're doing a lot of invocations through your method info, you can now start using method invoker to effectively speed those up. Next up, a quick little mention. There is a base 64 class that already exists that mainly deals with converting bytes to base 64 and back kind of part of the whole buffering and stream side of things. So you don't really see it on the systems.convert where you would usually go ahead and convert your strings into a byte and then the byte into the base64. You would use the base64 class for that. You still use system convert. However, base64 is getting a new method, which is, is valid. So if you are receiving a base64 string, you can now use this method to validate your base64 string. Okay. The next performance improvements has to do with string formatting. So if you have some kind of string and you want to format some kind of value into that string, there is a new construct for you that is called composite format. The way that you use it is whatever string that you have formatted. And if you're using localization with templated in values in there, you're going to have this string formatting all over in your resources files, etc. From that resource file, when you're referring to that formatted string, you can put it inside the composite format.parse method and get your composite format. This composite format, as we see right over here, the S format being formatted right over here, is going to perform a lot better over just regular formatting, which is over here. And by saying a lot better, yeah, not 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 that much better. The next on our radar are spans and specifically system.memory extensions class. This contains all of the extension methods that go against your generic span. All right. So improvements to the count method, for example, yeah, if you have an array of some things, if you grab that array or a collection as a span, you will get access to these methods that are on the memory extensions. So count in this case is a lot faster than, for example, looking for a character occurrence in this array, or perhaps some kind of occurrence, depending on what generic type you have inside your span. The other couple of new things that are coming in here are replace. So again, this is working on span. And then you also have one on the read only span. The reason I'm highlighting the read only span is because the example over here is very, looks very lucrative. You know, you have this string over here, you're converting it to a character array, and you're going to be, I mean, replacing occurrences and strings. One of the most common operations that you do, and you're going to take a look at this. Okay, we got a, we had a string and we have an S, a span, and then we just replace it. And oh, holy camoly, we can make our code twice as fast. Uh, not really. At the end of here, it does 
to char array it so you get a new character array at this point and you're working on a character array if you as span a string you get a read-only span so then you actually have to create a span uh, that is going to be the destination so whatever change you're going to perform you will have to actually put it somewhere so it's not like you can go ahead and replace everywhere where you're doing string replace with an s span and it's just going to work just the same you're going to have to do quite a little bit of more work with that but be aware that if you have some kind of collection and you're replacing occurrences there you have the access to this replace method now and then scrolling a little bit further do, 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 do. more stuff on uh, where replacement method is being utilized up until yada 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 we come to the split and split any methods again just a couple of new things and uh, they are again will be working on spans here they just describe that the split method behaves exactly like the string overload methods don't want to translate nothing put that away again just want to get to the benchmarks here we're working with an actual string in the old way you would just have your string you would split it you would perform your checks etc so now as you have your input you're actually getting a read-only span of that string and you're going to be doing work with split any the, ex the new extension method on that string and you're going to look for occurrences of any of these characters and if you're going to find these occurrences same as with the replace split creates new string occurrences once it actually does split here what you're doing is you're allocating a container to effectively hold those parts that you're going to split into and store all of those strings inside of there which you can then do work with okay so the code volume in both of these situations is about the same and the performance trade-off is in terms of memory allocation massive in terms of actual runtime Eh, you can also argue that this is massive by the way one cool thing is for all of these they have these pull requests attached and all of these pull requests tend to be quite small you open them up and you can also see the tests that i have written and the benchmarks next up is a class called search values in system buffer search values uh, the functionality here is not new it is pretty similar to index any on the read-only span so you have a string you get the read-only span and then you call index of any you're effectively looking for an occurrence of one of these characters inside of your string uh, moving down a little bit to how you would actually use this is you would use search values dot create and then the values that you're searching for currently this will only work with characters and bytes so if you're looking for occurrences within your strings you're going to find this very useful now whenever you're going to be working with your span and you're going to be using an index of any you can actually take your search values and supply them there okay here they just give an example of uh, how these different combinations generate different implementations in the background so depending on what you're searching for there is going to be a better way to search for that thing okay and if we can find some benchmarks uh, well uh, this example is just talking about the improvements of index of any and here's the comparison of using index of any just on its own and with the s line endings over here okay so the improvement is over twice as fast okay so you'd effectively have a better compilation of the things that you're searching for once they are converted into this search values of a character or a byte okay next up we have list here the main thing is there is a new method that is being added or a couple of them i should say there is going to be add range insert range and then there is also a copy to method that is uh, working only for for copying list data to a span and this is just meant to be a very efficient way of filling up a list or a span so here is an example we have some kind of list first of all we go ahead and clear it we have a source as a span and then we fill it up one by one if you take your source and you convert it to a span you can start adding that directly and that is just going to be way way faster okay and if you're wondering hold up isn't there already an add range method and there is one and uh, here is the description for the two so the one that we already have actually works on the enumerable 
interface okay this one works specifically on read only and this method is not actually present on the list or on the collection classes it is present as an extension method okay because otherwise there would be this collision over here because they both implement the enumerable interface so if you have a type, uh, for example, like a array, which is going to implement read-only because arrays are immutable. If you have a list, you do not have access to converting it to a read-only span. You're going to have to go through the enumerable option over here. So anyway, the array implements the enumerable and the read-only span. If you supply your array like this, the enumerable method is going to be triggered. If you convert it to a read-only span, or I should say cast, you're going to trigger the extension method. Okay. Okay. Dictionary. Nothing too serious, too convenience methods for you. If you have an enumerable of key value pair, you can just to dictionary. Super easy. And then the addition of another method. If I can find it somewhere over here, let me just go ahead and search for it. There we have it. Try add. So instead of writing contains and then if contains add, you just have try add. And that is pretty much it. Another thing that I'm not going to be mentioning here that is mentioned in the blog are frozen dictionaries. So I think there are a couple of videos out there that are already talking about this. I think Nick Chaps has covered it. You have some data that isn't going to change and you want to search it efficiently. You just to frozen dictionary and you're done. No, not much else to say on, on that front. One thing that I will mention about immutable collections under the category of which frozen dictionary does come in, we're not going to be talking about frozen dictionaries here, but here uh, the addition of system runtime interrupt services immutable collection marshal class. Okay. This class effectively exposes two methods as immutable array and as array. And this will basically allow you to go back and forth between the immutable array and just the regular array without the additional allocation. Most of you don't use immutable data structures, so you know, it's not like you need to worry about this. And then we have collection expressions. So I'm not going to be covering all of this uh, syntax goodness that you get with uh, you write your thing like this and then it automatically casts to a list or it will automatically determine whether it will be a stack allocation, etc. Uh, none of that. The thing that I'm actually going to cover here is a little bit more obscure that I think you should still uh, understand of its existence is the collection builder you can mark up if you're extending from some kind of collection interface or you're, you're creating your own collection class you can use the collection builder attribute to specify on which class should you be finding the factory method in order to instantiate that collection and if there is some kind of more efficient way of instantiation of that collection whatever that implementation is that is going to be used instead of the current adding element one by one and the examples over here don't really illustrate that much so let's go ahead and have an actual code example in this example code i'm instantiating my collection using the new list expression syntax and the reason that i can actually do this is because i'm implementing the i collection interface now when this is going to be created it is going to trigger the add method so let's go ahead and run this. We're going to see one, two, three being printed to the console. Now with the collection builder attribute, if we place this on some kind of collection, we can point to another method on another class to actually instantiate our collection. So if I uncomment this other thing that I have over here, it's going to have the create method, which is going to work on the read only span. Now, when I run my application, we'll see one being printed to the console. And this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you think there is anything that I missed, please again, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. If you enjoy my work and would like to support it further, I invite you to come. Please do so on my Patreon. There is no source code to get from Patreon for this video, but if you do support me on Patreon, you get access to the source code from all of my previous videos. A special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.